Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining my session, uh, Zero to Hero in Kubernetes Native Java. So just a quick introduction myself. My name is Daniel O. Oh. I'm working for Red Hat as a developer advocate with a specialized cloud enabled runtime, for example, Quarkus, Spring Boot, Node.js. And also I spend a lot of time how to integrate cloud enabled runtimes into Kubernetes environment with the uh, serverless and service mesh and GitOps practice. I'm also CNCF and DevOps Institute ambassador, uh, which you, I'm really love to showcase uh, practices and then uh, reference architecture, how to build and then uh, implement your cloud network architecture and environment with the CNCF project. And here's my quick contact information. You can follow my Twitter, Daniel030, uh, and my business URL, DanielTV. I already uploaded more than uh, 200 technical video and then uh, inside for technical team. It's, it's not more like a technical stuff. It's more like a, a practice and solution pattern. And here's my GitHub repository. You feel free to steal any of my existing sample application uh, to uh, replicate your demos or uh, run something new or the new technologies. And here's my uh, book as well. Feel free to just download an ebook, et cetera. Okay, so before we get started, uh, why we need to think about Kubernetes native Java application in this era. So let me a uh, little really quick uh, introduction of uh, uh, why uh, the Java was designed uh, back in 1995, in almost 27 years ago. So Java was designed uh, to handle the high throughput for network traffic. Uh, in a, in a, at the time, the so Java is really awesome. When you uh, create and packaging Java application, AKA uh, bytecode, you can run any virtual machine across internet technologies, which is your recall. And then nobody actually cared about uh, how much money, how much time you need to spend to run the Java application. It's a more important thing is to make a stable your application 24 seven all the time. That is the only matter enterprise company cared about decades ago. And things changed that because Kubernetes was born back in 2014. And then all enterprise application already moved to the cloud environment, which is high scalability, high performance is always a top priority rather than scalability. Maybe scalability is some kind of default uh, benefit or default uh, capability. It's a, but more and more uh, traffic came from IoT devices and mobile application or mobile devices, even uh, AI ML stuff, which is a scalability with the high performance is the first priority all the time. Kubernetes is orchestration platform with the container technology actually uh, solve the kind of problem for many enterprise application, many application, uh, the enterprise companies at the same time. However, the Java is not fitting the that kind of challenge because Java is a little bit heavyweight uh, due to the dynamic behavior. Specifically, if you have one, 10 Java applications, it doesn't matter. But if you have a thousand of thousand Java applications on Kubernetes, that is a big challenge for your enterprise company, uh, not only uh, application development for developers, but also maintaining your resources like a CPU, memory, disk, and network traffic for SRE team or cloud uh, admin cluster. But however, we cannot abandon all Java developers over the world is more than 50 million Java developers. They always uh, spend a lot of time every single day to improve and develop new business application, business functionality every single day at their daily work. So we need to more uh, care about them, uh, how to make it better and make it their easier uh, awesome. So Quarkus was born, it's one of the open source project invented by Red Hat, but also a lot of vendors and individual contributor uh, really uh, jump into this open source project and make it better and make it greater every single day. So Quarkus pretty much uh, focused on Kubernetes native application. Everybody's saying a lot of terms, for example, cloud native or microservices or Kubernetes native. There are some little bit different uh, among those terms. For example, Microsoft's application can be running on 
bare metal, virtual machine, even a cloud. And the cloud native application is not only Kubernetes, but also like a public cloud provider such as Amazon Lambda, Google, uh, such a, a public cloud pro provider based on virtual instance rather than container technology slash Kubernetes. So Kubernetes native means it's more like 100% Aligned with the Kubernetes feature, and then uh, I'm going to really talk about Java with the Kubernetes native. With the Quarkus, uh, Java developer, they can uh, keep doing uh, some of the uh, skill set more improvement as well as more like uh, make it better, make it greater, not uh, try to run new technologies. So here's a, a quick one-page illustration how Quarkus enable Java developer make a better life with the uh, application development on Kubernetes. So a bunch of stuff in the right hand side. So Quarkus enables Java developer compile application with the Maven or Gradle, like one of the package tool, and then package application two different way. One is a traditional Java application, like a Java file running on JVM, but also uh, it, Quarkus allows the developer to have a native executable file. Just imagine that uh, if you're familiar with the Windows programming, so you just have a multiple EXE file extension, which you can just run that file on Windows operating system without any runtimes, just like an executable file, literally. And then it actually happened in Node.js, like a JavaScript, but not going to have, not happen ever again, ever once again in uh, Java space. But Quarkus to make that happen, you just uh, packaging application and executable file. And the one of the beauty of the native executable file on Java, it uh, reduce uh, runtime and startup time and response time. For example, here's a simple uh, hello world application, let's say, and then you just run that application maybe uh, one second while just half a second startup, which is really faster than any other Java application traditionally. And now you're going to uh, package that application as executable file. It takes only uh, 10 milliseconds. It's uh, more than 100 times faster than any other Java application. So what does that mean for Java developer, but also DevOps team? So for example, traditional uh, traditionally, you have a run one single application, maybe 10 applications across uh, your production server, which is really good. But now in the cloud environment, sometimes you have some big promotion event on your applications, like a business requirement. And then your application should be spike with some uh, high natural traffic, like a seasonality. It will maybe uh, scale out maybe 100 hundred thousand application paths on Kubernetes. But Kubernetes is actually um, orchestrate that kind of scalability automatically, which is really awesome. However, if your application takes maybe uh, five seconds to start up, you know, what about the hundred K application pod? You may, you may be uh, five second multiple hundred K, which is totally not cool uh, for your uh, scalability on Kubernetes. That's why a lot of enterprise companies are moving to from Java to like a Node.js, Go, and Python, which is a little bit faster and a small size application and memory footprint on the Kubernetes. But uh, Quarkus actually changed that kind of stuff and actually solved that old problem. And also Quarkus provide a lot of integration feature with the Kubernetes. For example, Traditionally, many enterprise Java application uh, maintain since the sensitive information, for example, database username and password or security, security token, et cetera. In order to maintain that security information, you have to store uh, external uh, data boot or some kind of encrypted database. But in order to encrypt, decrypt a lot of stuff, it takes more time, which means uh, uh, code a lower performance to access your actual data. So for the Kubernetes actually provide a config map or secret to uh, maintain this sensitive information and some configuration out of the application side. But however, the big challenge of Java developer, how to handle 
how to link to your application into Kubernetes resources, for example, Confirma and Secret. So Quarkus actually provides multiple extension to incorporate the kind of Kubernetes feature into uh, uh, application side. So I'm gonna stop my boring talking. I'm gonna showcase a really bit quick demo. I don't have enough time today, but maybe just like you show this guitar, I'm gonna just play the music on the Quarkus, how to make it uh, your life fun and easier and happier. So this is my uh, sample uh, terminal and I don't have any application. Now I'm gonna create a new uh, project with your Quarkus CLI. You can actually use Gradle or Maven, whatever you need. And here's the application project name, uh, developer Joey demo. And I'm going to add a few uh, the uh, application capability. I'm going to add a database connection and then uh, or mapping, how to store and consume data. And then I'm going to parse my JSON format data. So just create a new project. And I'm going to open this project using my uh, preferred ID tool is the uh, VS Code. And the first thing is I'm gonna change right directory. I'm gonna run my application like a dev mode. So this is one of the beauty of the Quarkus for developer. Increase your developer productivity as well as in the end, it uh, increase your application quality before you deploy this application to production environment, which is Kubernetes. So whenever you change the code or improve the application requirement or uh, bug fix or uh, solve the performance issue, you have to keep compile, rebuild, and uh, restart your application on time locally to check the, your application capability. But the Quarkus is actually provide live coding capability under the dev mode. Uh, you don't need to do that, that kind of stuff repeatedly, but Quarkus will do uh, for you. And then one of the beauty of the dead app, uh, Quarkus application, when you go to application, here's my sample application, like a hello world, uh, the end RESTful API, hello, and then we're gonna go to hello rest agent, which is cool. And then here's my application property. I have nothing application property, but I just add a JDBC, uh, uh, Maven uh, dependency, which is a Quarkus extension, uh, I'm gonna maybe zoom in. Uh, it'll be easier to uh, take a look at by mature audience. So this means my application is supposed to be add data transaction logic in the end, which means I need to database, but developer actually prefer to use in-memory database rather than installing uh, PostSQL database or uh, link to external database which is a really common practice application development in developer side. However, when you uh, just complete the application development and push this code into GitHub, uh, GitHub repository, and then your nice Jenkins pipeline or CICD pipeline, uh, just packaging application to deploy to Kubernetes. But there are technology gap uh, between dev and production environment, for example, uh, developer prefer use in-memory database, but the the production environment actually using PostSQL database. So sometimes your application doesn't work in production environment due to the technology stack differences. So Quarkus just try to avoid the kind of technology differences from the at the very beginning on your developer environment. Because when I go to different terminal window, I'm gonna check this out and then here is my application. So here is my Quarkus application demo. So once you run the Quarkus demo, it automatically start, uh, start your uh, dependent uh, container image based on your uh, LED extension. For example, I already edited a PostSQL extension, which uh, Quarkus automatically trigger the starting uh, the some container on my local machine. When I see that, the PostSQL automatic startup and then test container uh, to make me more uh, flexible test environment uh, based on my uh, Docker container or apartment, whatever you have container environment. So the point is the developer, can you developer actually stand up uh, exactly the same uh, database stack in Kubernetes based on container, but the the point is the developer doesn't add any kind of uh, compilation at this, at this moment. And then when you uh, press D 
on the runtime in automatically go to Quarkus Dev UI, which is your recall, and then open the uh, UI, and then you can have all interesting stuff. And you click on testing, and then it automatically start continue testing. Sometimes you just skip uh, testing unit on your local development, but it's sometimes the really entire system because this application fixing only works on your local, not production environments. I just testing uh, just all succeed as you can see on the green color. And then go back to here and then I'm gonna uh, change the another terminal window. Here we go. And then I'm gonna just uh, try to access uh, RESTful API, something like a hello. And then now you can have a hello rest easy. And then back to the here, and I'm just changing the application. Uh, for example, uh, the NGX, uh, developer Joey, I just save a file and then back to the terminal and then go to access the endpoint once again and you will see the new result. But in the meantime, I never ever change, rebuild, recompile and restart my application runtime, which is a cool, that's mean exactly like Kubernetes. But here's the one great thing is when you go back to here, the terminal window, you can see my test just fail automatically detecting. So expect the result hello less easy, but you actually change the result. This is really cool stuff here because a lot of a lot of developer Actually, oh, my application totally working on my local, but they just uh, skip all test cases. And then um, it sometimes fail entire system due to the, your fantastic CI CD tool. Then you can go to dev UI, and then you can actually have the same uh, fail result here. And then you can see the result in the UI as well. So in order to fix that, and actually when I generate new Quarkus project, and then it automatically create test case as well here. So that's why the error is happening. And I just fix that. I just save a file and I'm back to the terminal. And it automatically restarting the continuous testing. I will pass it all and then back to the dev UI as well. You're gonna and pass this kind of stuff. So this is really cool uh, for making Kubernetes native Java application because I just use my uh, local environment and then just deploy to uh, and just properly deploy your application to Kubernetes, but it actually showed that kind of stuff. So I don't have enough time today, but uh, I'm gonna just quick summarize uh, this thing kind of uh, the topic as well. And then don't worry, I just already created a bunch of the technical video, uh, how to make a better Kubernetes Java application. So here's my Benny URL, Daniel TV. Uh, please uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel and give us some, any comment or issue or any suggestion. For example, uh, in, in uh, this demo, I actually keep uh, making better, for example, how to add the, the Kubernetes config map or Kubernetes secret and deploy Kubernetes. And then you can finally have the same application, any differences uh, between uh, development environment and production environment. So just feel free, once again, uh, go to my channel and then find a lot of technical video, not only Quarkus, but also a multiple use case agent solution pattern uh, for example, serverless function and a modern Java application development and also Spring Boot and Node.js and the DevOps practice. And then here is a uh, Kubernetes Lambda example as well. That's it. That's uh, what I wanted to talk about today. And then hopefully you enjoyed my uh, session as well as uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you and have a good rest of the day.